Hello, this is going to be a brief outline of assessment one for the module C6010, International Perspectives on the Management of Animal Populations. Now this assignment is uh, to critically review an IUCN threatened species. Now, I'm going to walk you through the, um, the guidance for that. Let me just um, bring up our web page. <clears throat> okay, so if you go to the Moodle page, um, you'll see that, as you know, all of them, the schedule, links to material, links to the lecture, PDFs, are all in this one block. Um, I like to do it that way. Sometimes I like to look at where we've been, where we are, and where we're going. So if we look at um, the lectures that we've had. You've had a number of lectures from me. I believe you've had a lecture by now from uh, Nikki Randall. And right now, many of you are are uh, are in Wales, I believe. I hope the weather is good for you. It was very poor last year, as you probably heard. Now, where we're going uh, in the immediate future is that you have a few more lectures on the schedule, and then a final lecture from me this year. And uh, then in uh, January 25th, 2024, seems so far away from now, uh, there is this assignment. And you can just click on this link for the assignment brief. If you want to know about the other assignment, um, the brief and everything you need for that is up. And the due date for it is um, March 18th, so a couple of weeks after we get back from South Africa. But I will introduce that to you in, in this space, our last scheduled lecture in person. Now, uh, in the meantime, let's um, just have a look at the brief itself. And uh, let me go through this. So if you download that and look at it, um, you'll see that, uh, as I said, it's a, it's a critical review. And I'll explain to you as I go on what I mean by that. Now, um, the time guidance is uh, 40 hours of work. This is including any research and reading that you do and the writing of the piece. It's a short written piece of uh, 1,500 to 2,500 words. Um, if, it, if it's a lot less or a lot more, um, it, it, it could cost you points, but these aren't hard limits. So around that range would be good. You'll have a far smaller file size than 50 megabytes, but that's the max. Format is in a Word document, dot .docx, if that means anything to you. Um, it covers uh, and is relevant to all of the major module outcomes for this assessment, but the thing I'll note is that it's, um, it's uh, worth 50% of your, of your module marks, and, and the other assessment, assessment 2, is, is also worth 50%. Okay, now I've got a task outline here, which I'm going to go over with you. It's pretty detailed. Um, and the idea is for you to create a blog post that is a critical evaluation for a single species um, that is uh, of international conservation concern, let's say. And um, it's this format is interesting because as conservation biologists, we always have to communicate to different stakeholders. And uh, the audience for this is a general public. Uh, no particular training, but it also should should be um, an evidence-based review that would, would also satisfy a, a critical, scientifically educated uh, person who reads it. All right, so what you're going to do on this post is, um, is pick a single species and assess the conservation status, the conservation impacts, and any mitigation efforts that, uh, that have been uh, relevant or targeting that species. And uh, the most important part is that you use a claims and evidence framework. You, uh, you design the message you want to deliver in this blog post. Um, you create a series of claims to deliver that message. But for the claims that you make, there should be evidence that you point to with the citations. Okay? So, uh, in other words, you need to demonstrate a clear link between... Um, good evidence and uh, and the story that you're telling us. 
Okay, now the the evidence should be primarily scientific publications, um, peer-reviewed literature, uh, as as you know, is uh, is created by scientists, and scientists, um, other than the ones that create it, judge it on the, the basis of merit and, um, and bias. And uh, the peer-reviewed process, many, many scientists would say it's not perfect, but it's pretty close to perfect. It works really well, and it's been around for a long time, as opposed to, say, the, uh, the, the general media and the news, uh, or web pages, or charities, or the government. Uh, all of those sources um, are inherently biased. Uh, now the news would say that they are unbiased, but because of the influence of advertising, they tend to, uh, and this is a widely known phenomenon, tailor their message to their audience. In other words, it's biased. So um, these are the things that I want you to think of when you create this. Uh, this is going to be an, an unbiased um, report based on the evidence, primarily citing the peer-reviewed literature. Here's some top tips. Write something interesting. Write something that is fun to read. Write something you would want to read and be interested in. I don't want a piece of internet fluff here. I want something that is going to stimulate, excite, engage the people who might read it, including me. Um, second, I want you to uh, write something that will satisfy not just Joe Public, or Jane Public, but a critically minded, scientifically educated person as well, and therefore it should be firmly grounded, grounded in evidence. All right, so I've got some detailed instructions. Um, so your goal is to uh, highlight a species of conservation concern. Um, Going to use the concept of claims to evidence, uh, like I said, with your narrative backed up by scientific evidence from the peer-reviewed literature. Choose a species of conservation concern that has international significance um, and ensure that that species has enough literature to do it. I, I mean, I would always encourage you to pick something unusual, something interesting, something um, even something a little challenging. Um, I like the weird stuff in the zoological world, um, but the species you choose should have the literature base to make your job easier. So keep that in mind. Um, now you're going to conduct research on the species, probably a little bit while you choose it. No need to clear your species uh, with me. If, if it's got a listing on the IUC and red list, and uh, you can justify that it is of, uh, in fact, your task is to justify in the blog post that it is of um, conservation concern, it's a perfectly good species. No need for, for asking me um, to approve your species. You're going to need to identify the conservation status and associated evidence with it on the red list. And um, the evidence gathering for the uh, impact of survival and so forth is going to be from primarily the peer-reviewed literature. But what you want to do is avoid um, gray literature that's non-peer-reviewed. The worst um, the worst kind of evidence that anyone could cite would be um, just a, a list of web pages, especially if they're from charities. Uh, many, many charities, there's nothing wrong with charities, but their information is um, inherently biased. So we're going to avoid that kind of information here, even if, even if you uh, really think highly of a charity, or, or even if I do. Okay, um, the uh, blog post structure. You're going to have a selfie introduction, including a selfie pic with a brief author bio at the top. You're going to have a species overview that is a general introduction and background information for the species. And it could be a, all the details that we might want, um, habitat behavior and importance uh, in ecological function and so forth. Conservation status, outline that with evidence. Claims and evidence. This is going to be your review of the literature you've found that's relevant, three to five citations. Um, you're going to highlight knowledge gaps in the literature you were able to do. Now, uh, this, this knowledge gaps, you have a little bit of an imperative here. You'll have to convince the scientifically minded reader that um, the knowledge gaps exist not because um, 
they, you didn't, you chose not to find and read the papers about that species for, for some, some topic that's relevant here, but because you did search for them and you failed to find evidence. So a uh, knowledge gap isn't merely the absence of information in your blog post, it's the absence of information that you've, you've tried to find that's relevant. So you'll need to tip your hat to that. Want an outline of the mitigation efforts for the conservation status of this species um, and the effectiveness of those uh, efforts. This is often hard to find. So this, these two sections, the knowledge gaps and the mitigation efforts, um, have to complement each other. And then finally, a uh, brief conclusion, summarize your key points. Um, and I want you to make a statement here about the importance of evidence-based conservation efforts. Folks, we can't save every species, and we've got limiting resources to, to do it, and we have got to create a system where even, even members of the general public are, are critical about uh, what, their, what their donations and what our tax money goes for in every country. It's the only way we're going to actually do conservation, and I would just like you to put this into your own words. It's a strong message from, um, from the material that I've presented to you so far, and I would like to see it come out in this blog post here in the conclusion. Sources, three to five peer-reviewed sources in the Harvard style. We have our own Harper Adams Harvard style, as I pointed out to you. It's something that you can do that is so easy, but um, people lose points on it all the time, and that's ma make a perfect bibliography make it perfectly consistent. If you just copy and paste from Google Scholar, it will not be perfect. There's not consistency there. It's your job to make it consistent in the Harvard style. That is a, it is such an easy way to impress. Um, media integration. Now, I would like you to include, aside from your selfie, at least one relevant high quality image of the species. And you, you probably want to do this from an unlicensed source um, websites like Unsplash, PicJumbo, those are good. Wikipedia is probably the best um, source for weird stuff. They have an unlicensed picture for, for um, many, many species on there, even the really weird stuff. Uh, or, of course, something you took yourself. An example of what I mean um, would be something like this. You know, I, I took this just a few minutes ago of myself, so it doesn't have to be a, a crazy good um, picture, but uh, not a totally joke picture either, and a little bit of a bio of yourself, and then something like this of the uh, of the target species. You can be creative, and if you can justify the presence of a couple of pictures, great. Put them in there, but um, at least one. Um, <clears throat> citations and bias. I think I've already said everything about this. Three to five peer-reviewed. Um, minimize your reliance on websites and books. They're just not as good. They're not good enough for this assignment. If you, if you must cite them, okay, but keep it to a minimum. And the focus here will be on the peer-reviewed literature. It's up to you which species you choose, so also keep that in mind. If you, the, the, uh, I can tell you it won't be an acceptable, um, an acceptable excuse that uh, I couldn't find any citations. Well, pick a new species. Um, you want to um, critically evaluate your sources as well for, for bias, um, but uh, you know that'll be that'll be uh, almost taken for granted from peer-reviewed publications. So this is really about any extra sources that you choose. Um, uh, uh, one of the best motivations for choosing a, a charity website is if you do critically evaluate the claims and the evidence that they they provide. That would be something to include. Okay, audience engagement. So yeah, write in a style that's exciting and fun, um, avoids excessive jargon or carefully explains scientific terms when you need to. Uh, there should be a tone of thinking critically. It's a strong theme here, isn't it? About uh, wildlife conservation. Um, you know, you can think of wildlife conservation as an intellectual endeavor, as I do. Uh, but it, it also can be an industry. And uh, I, I like to think critically about that industry as much as I can. In fact, it, I believe it's my duty, and I would like you to think about it too. Um, 
submission guidelines. Now, uh, your blog post should be about 1,500, 2,500 words. Um, should have your source list at the end, like we talked about, and you're going to submit it in a Word document. The assessment criteria will be um, just in general the accuracy and depth of your content, the um, the critical parts um, of the evidence and and what and how you presented it, clarity and engagement of your writing, quality and relevant uh, relevance of the media that you've used, and the um, the use of citations and avoidance of biased sources. Okay, so you can read the detailed account in the rubric, the um, date of the launch um, was a couple of days ago now when I uploaded the uh, assessment guidance to the web page and the feedback and everything will be returned. It's a little more than the four weeks but um, because I'll be in South Africa myself uh, during a couple of weeks of this assignment. Um, uh, this is the uh, deadline by which I can guarantee that your results will be back to you. Okay, that's it. Uh, if you do have any questions, um, I would uh, I would uh, be happy to answer them. I think the best place to answer them is in in class. So I will be there for that that last session, and there's still plenty of time for the blog post. So I think that's the best place. If you have an absolutely burning need to ask me a question by email, that's okay too. All right, I hope that was helpful, and I'll uh, see you in class. Bye, guys.